Microsoft says its latest browser will have built-in apps for assessing the reliability of media outlets. However, the system in question, called NewsGuard, has been criticized by many journalists. RT's Ilya Petrenko takes a closer look at who may stand to benefit from this new feature. Proceed with caution. Just a regular sign of a blind corner, an overhead crane area, wild animals crossing, and news you should be careful with while reading. Proceed with caution. This website generally fails to maintain basic standards of accuracy and accountability. There you have it. We've already told you about NewsGuard, an online tool masterminded by folks like the former head of the CIA that flags good news websites as green and those it sees as dodgy ones as red. It's been up to you if you want to install the plugin or not, unless you're a user of the Microsoft Edge web browser. From now on, the features built into the app. At least you can switch it off. After launching in the U.S., NewsGuard will expand to serve the billions of people globally who get news online. So perhaps a little contract with Microsoft could be one of the first steps of that expansion. Readers of any of that red-colored carousel, caution, please. By the way, this is what we've heard from one of UK's most read outlets, rated one out of five for credibility. We have only very recently become aware of the NewsGuard startup and are in discussions with them to have this egregiously erroneous classification resolved as soon as possible. With these guys, most or all the criteria is fine. Green light. You're good to go. Oh, BuzzFeed's there in the green zone too, because perhaps it never spews out anything unconfirmed or unreliable. Even the team green bench in the UK has realized something's probably wrong here. But once I remind you who's behind NewsGuard, things will start to make sense. I mean, do you really expect the brainchild of a board of advisors that's comprised of all kinds of former American security and foreign affairs officials to flag WikiLeaks anything but red. Anyway, nothing to worry about since the golden or, sorry, green standards of journalism are sacred for these people. I'm not against propaganda. Every country does it and they have to do it to their own population and I don't necessarily think it's that awful. Speaking of standards of accountability, one of NewsGuard's investors has chosen not to do anything about its contract with Saudi Arabia. They don't have a problem taking care of Saudi officials' PR even after the shameless murder of journalist Jamal Khashoggi. Anyway, Microsoft's okay with these people being in charge of which color goes where, as long as the tech giants get to avoid more awkward questions like, why aren't you dealing with all that fake news? They can blame us and we're happy to be blamed. Unlike the platforms, we're happy to be accountable. Everyone chooses their own way to proceed with caution. And joining us now to further discuss investigative journalist, friend of the show, Ben Swan. All right, Ben, we are gonna, we're, here we are talking about it again, uh, this Microsoft thing going on with NewsGuard. And, uh, what do you make of, of Microsoft Edge's attempt of, of ridding us of fake news? So obviously it's no real surprise the tech companies would move in this direction. Um, it's incredibly disappointing because we knew we'd get here eventually and here we are. Uh, anybody who believes these ratings um, is just drinking the Kool-Aid that these companies are trying to force down your throat. Look, former CIA director Michael Hayden is one of the advisors for this app. A former CIA director, anybody who knows anything about the CIA, even in passing, knows it's an organization that is dedicated to lying to people around the world, including right here in the United States. Why would a former CIA director who they trump as being someone who can be trusted, be trusted in any of this stuff? And, you know, Ben, NewsGuard, they say that they focus mostly on American-based websites. Uh, but right. what, about, what about the foreign ones? Where, where's the, is there any line? Is there any bar? I mean, what do, what do they do to address the foreign ones that they consider fake? Right. So, so I think one of the issues is they're saying they're focused on the U.S., right, simply because that's the point of this app. The point of this app is not to actually differentiate between fake news websites and real news websites. It's not. It is to, once again, 
place another layer over these establishment sites that push the establishment neocon warmongering message uh, to audiences around the world. And it doesn't really worry about those foreign sites because look, there's plenty of, of fake news, uh, if you want to call it fake, mm -hmm. that comes out in those foreign sites. They don't care about that. By the way, as that report pointed out too, the idea that you would have BuzzFeed receive a, right. a, a, a green badge in this is, is ridiculous. A site that published the, the Trump dossier, a site that just recently right. uh, released this report that can't be backed up, and yet they have a green a green badge. Why? What is the standard that's being used here? Right. Isn't it interesting that that they have yet to not uh, referring to BuzzFeed that that NewsGuard has yet to issue maybe a I don't know a yellow light like a proceed with caution yeah. now that BuzzFeed has obviously been rebuked by Robert Mueller's own office. The spokesman came and rebuked that story, and and I guess they're still sitting on a green light versus um, you know people like. RT proceed with caution with us. Um, yes. So how do you how do you see the media landscape going forward um, as more and more tech companies are attempting to effectively just censor what we have access to or what we should see or what we should read. Well, I think that that this is the path forward right now. So there's going to be a greater divide between legitimate news outlets, and when I say legitimate, I mean fact based, truth based outlets like RT um, versus uh, these establishment sites like the Daily Beast and like BuzzFeed and like CNN and like MSNBC who don't get everything wrong but have plenty of wrong mixed in there, plenty of propaganda mixed into it uh, so that their viewers and readers are being constantly pushed a message. And I think the average person understands that. Will the average person trust these, these green badges and red badges? I, unfortunately, I think too many people will have an automatic um, visceral response that, that does trust those badges, and that's why this concerns me. Not because people are dumb and, and can't understand that they're being fed a line by CNN and by BuzzFeed, but because people have a quick response to tech issues um, that tell them something's good or something is right. dangerous. And the green and the red, Make no mistake, that's also related to like virus and antivirus. Right. That's the message they're trying to send. Right, you do have a knee jerk reaction when you see a red sign. You don't have to write yep. the word stop in it. We see a red sign on the, on the street corner, you automatically stop. So, I mean, that's the yep. same knee jerk reaction, right? So, when it comes down to it, Ben, who holds this moral authority, if you will, over what is valid and what is invalid? I mean, who's to say? Well, I think that's what we're about to find out, right? There is a, there is a war going on. I, I'd like to say, you know, this project that we've launched called Isagoria, which really is about free speech, the, the line we use is this. There is not a war of ideas anymore. There is a war against ideas. Right now, there is a war against ideas in this country, against having a different thought or being dissenting to the establishment view. And I think that's where we're headed with this, is there's going to be a greater divide between those who demand that the public believe them above all facts, above all critical thinking. And on the other side, you're gonna have those of us who are fact-based and truth-based. And it, it, where it ends up, I believe that ultimately it ends up on the side of truth because I believe truth prevails, but it's gonna be a hard fought battle. Oh, Ben, my ever optimistic friend, thank you for <laughs> spending some time and chiming in on that today. Ben Swan, thank you. Thanks, Manila. Hey YouTube, thanks for checking out our channel. We hope you enjoyed the video. We have tons of content for you just like this. For more of RT America's one-of-a-kind news and analysis, be sure to subscribe and never stop questioning more.